G'day, Dylan O'Donnell here from the Byron Bay Observatory. I take photos of space and on this channel I try to share with you some of the tips and techniques that I use to get the best possible pictures of space. Now recently I've been just concentrating on one particular galaxy, a really weird galaxy, Centaurus A. Now the thing about Centaurus A is it has a lot of little dark dust lanes in the middle of it. Dust lanes that we don't get to see in any other galaxy in such high detail and quality because we're so close to this galaxy. So I've really been trying to get a lot of data. Now I normally don't get a lot of data. I normally try and bang out images as quick as I can. But in this particular instance, I had everything set up and I just wanted to do it slowly and carefully. So I gathered data over an entire five nights. Now a lot of times in astrophotography we talk about getting as much data as possible and having more data allows us to draw out that signal to noise ratio. But when I was a kid I saw these ads and I don't know if they're on now, they probably are, that John West, the tuna fishing company, their motto was it's what John West rejects that makes John West the best. So this is the fish John West reject. Right. And the same is true for astronomy. We don't actually want more data, we want less. We want the best out of all the data we get. Different programs will have different image grading techniques to allow you to measure the quality of each frame so that you can trim off the best and stack those only. I'll be using the subframe selector and I'll show you a couple of different methods, but one that I think works really well. My name is Dylan O'Donnell and you're watching Star Stuff. There is some seriously loud construction going on next door, so I do apologize about the noise here, but I just wanted to point out, oh, it might be stopping, <laughs> but I just wanted to point out the particular image train that I'm using here for this galaxy and why it's so important to get the best frames possible. I'm using the full 2800 millimeter focal length of this C11 telescope, which means I'm zoomed in really far into space. My image train here just goes straight into the off-axis guider. I have the guide camera off the top of the chip here. This chip is in sort of landscape mode, so the top of the chip, the flat top of the chip here is where the prism will be for the off-axis guider, so it won't get in the way of anything. Other than that, I have a filter drawer, which is blank right now because I'm just using no filter. So I'm getting the galaxy in its full broadband spectrum. I'm using the QHY 268M, which is just a fantastic 16-bit ASPC sized camera and it's working really well. The other thing I should mention is that I'm using the Skywatcher EQ8RH Pro which is just such a rock solid mount that while I'm weighting the images in PixInsight I actually don't care too much about eccentricity because I know that my stars are fully round now so I'm going to concentrate more on the half flux radius or full width half maximum which is basically a measurement of the focus of the stars and I'll also use star count which I'll show you in a moment. When I was studying computers in high school, we had this teacher, I think his name was Mr. Brown, and he told the class that none of us are using our CPU to its full potential. Every time during this video where my CPU is just doing overtime, I'll be referring to Mr. Brown, who I think was clearly an idiot. Okay, first things first, you want to calibrate your images. So do your flats, do your darks, or whatever you need to do, and get your full list of subs calibrated. Then we can start measuring them. See Mr. Brown, do you see me using my CPU now? Come on! Okay, so now I've got about 140 images here. Yep, that looks pretty good. There's a bit of a dust mote up here. It's a sort of a negative dust mote that the flat didn't truly deal with, but it's pretty good. You can see that the detail in the dust lanes is pretty sharp, but I have a suspicion that on the second night, uh, some of my frames weren't quite so good. Yeah, the stars just aren't quite as good. They're just not as sharp. They just don't compare. So we need to get rid of all this guff. But I've got so many files. So now we're going to load up this little guy, the subframe selector. So the first thing we're going to do is add all these files. And it's set to measure subframes. And we're just going to go global apply here. 
Yeah, look at that, Mr. Brown. My CPU is spiking and the fans are spinning. Okay, now we have this cool looking graph which makes you look really sciencey and smart and stuff. Now, the weight column is zero here because we're not using weight. If you want to measure by weights, you can click on this little FX button up here and then in the expressions area, add a formula. This is one that Rogue from uh, the Astrophotography Discord gave to me. And you know, it's all right. It'll give you this uh, weight column and it will populate this with a number. But I found that the weighting didn't truly reflect what I wanted to get out of the image. And what I want is to know which stars were in focus the most. So we're gonna change the measurement table to full width, half maximum, descending or ascending, it doesn't matter. So now this column here shows me the focus for all of them. The best focus we got was 4.6 and the worst was up here, 7.8. On the graph here, it says the halfway point is about 6.2. So I'm gonna take it from about 6.2 onwards. I'm gonna shift all of those and then I'm just gonna click remove. Now they're all gone, that's pretty good. So that'll show me every time the stars are in focus. However, there is another issue. Some of these nights that I was shooting, I had high cloud and some of them had low full width half maximum readings but that's because the high cloud was really just destroying the signal. And when the signal's destroyed, it gets really low and it looks like a good focused picture, but actually the signal is quite low and when you stretch it, it looks horrible. So I'm gonna apply a second reason to get rid of half of these frames. And that's the stars column here. This allows you to see how many stars PixInsight was able to count in every frame. So I'm gonna go over to the measurements table, drop down here and change it to stars. Now this sorts them all by star count and go down to the bottom and I'm just gonna select and click on remove. I've got 39 of the best quality focus subs with the highest star counts. So these are gonna be good frames. At this point, we're gonna go into the directory for output here and change the folder to something where we can store some good subs. I'm gonna call it good subs two. And we're gonna change this drop down from measure to output. Now all this is going to do is simply move the remaining files that were in here that we didn't delete off to a folder called good subs. It actually doesn't do anything to the image. It's just taking those files and shuffling them somewhere else. I have no idea why this part is so slow. If I was just selecting 39 files in the file system and copying them to a folder, it'd take a couple of seconds. Now that that's done for a sanity check, I'm just gonna blink all of those files. So of course I'm gonna star align all of these files with drizzle data, which will take a million years because Mr. Brown, my CPU is going crazy. By the way, if you're a subscriber, thanks for subscribing to this channel. 34,400 viewers. And every time this goes up by another 100, it plays Super Mario Brothers for me. So I know that my subscriber count is going up. If you like these videos and sometimes stupid astronomy comedy, uh, feel free to subscribe. And now I'm just going to stack all of those registered files, added the drizzle files as well, global apply and off for another cup of coffee. Do you see my CPU, Mr. Brown? I love this bit when you get to this, the final stack and it's not stretched yet so you can't see anything and then you hit the auto stretch and it just pops out at you. I, I just love it. Ah, ah. Look at this, chef's kiss. <laughs> it's just so sharp. It really is the stuff that you don't use that gives you the best possible result at the end. I had a lot of data there, like I could have stacked four hours worth of data. I'm only stacking one hour. So I'm just taking basically 25% of all the data I had and just using the best of it. It's basically lucky imaging for deep space objects. Hope you enjoyed that video on subframe selection and image grading in general. Remember the aim is not to get just lots and lots of data, it's to get lots of the best data you can by really throwing away a lot of data. Throw away all the trash and just stack 
the good stuff. Thanks also for everyone who shared some concern about my nose. I did go to the skin cancer clinic and the doctor blasted me in the face with liquid nitrogen and removed a bunch of trouble spots, but they were benign and I've got nothing to worry about. However, you should slip, slop, slap. Make sure if you go out in the sun, especially if you live in the UV capital of Australia, because while we're all going to die, dying of skin cancer early probably isn't fun. Thanks for tagging me in your images and I hope your astrophotography journey is going well. My name is Dylan O'Donnell, you've been watching Star Stuff. Remember, everything is meaningless and we're all going to die.